Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Jennifer is grateful for the opportunity to educate, empower, and inspire you with powerful conversations, insights, and new viewpoints. Here's your host, Jennifer J. Hammond. As you know, I am so passionate about making sure we put more music in the world and how can we help in this world? We always want to put more yeez in today. And so I'm so excited about my next guest. These are, I'm going to say, friends of mine that have been on SiriusXM on my radio show for years, really, and are friends. I'm going to say friends because one of the things that they're passionate about is music. So let me tell you a little bit about Vincent and Joey. They are amazing. They're on a mission to help more kids and adults reap the educational, therapeutic, and social benefits of playing music. Oh my gosh, every single one of us has some music inside of us. They founded the national nonprofit Keep Music Alive and two international music holidays. First one is Teach Music Week, which is in March, and the other one is Kids Music Day in October. They now partner with over a thousand music schools and stores every year to offer free, free lessons to new students and hold special events that benefits kids playing music. So welcome, welcome, Vincent and Joanne. Yay! Yay! So wonderful to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Oh, I'm so happy to have you guys. And I love that you're so passionate about helping everybody, especially kids. You know, right now, I'm going to start right now where we're in the pandemic. We're in year 2021. So we're not in 2020 anymore. I want to make sure that, you know, this is a fresh recording. But in 2021, this is also a time when people, you know, kids are really feeling trapped. You know, some are getting to go to school, some are not, you know, depending on what state they're in, depending on, quite frankly, how freaked out their parents are and all right. sorts of other things that are happening. So how can we encourage them to pick up an instrument and play music? Well, basically, you know, thanks to the Internet, you know, there's so many ways you can start to learn how to play an instrument any time of the year. And, you know, we recommend parents, you know, whether the school has a music program or not, to try to get their child involved in something musical. I mean, for young toddlers, you know, it can be a simple, you know, musical toys to get them started on their musical journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you get into the school age, you know, pick up a ukulele, pick up a small little keyboard. I mean, they're so inexpensive these days. Uh, and if money is an op is an op uh, is a problem, you can actually connect with organizations that donate instruments and try to get you know one in your hands that'll help you out. And then just get them started in playing. You know, no pressure. You're not trying to turn them into professional musicians. You're just trying to get them to enjoy the experience to express themselves. And you'll find that kids are generally happier when they're involved with music and arts. I mean, a lot of times kids. The class they look forward to in school is that music class, that art class, and that what keeps them going the seventh period because they know at the end, you know, they have this class. And otherwise, they might be like, you know what, mom, I don't want to go to school today. So mm -hmm. just so many reasons. And then there's just the research that shows, you know, how important music and arts is, is developing the brain. It helps mm -hmm. them with their science, their math, their English. So, you know, music and arts, got to keep it. Got to keep it. Yeah. I mean, and even if you take it, I know you, you focus on kids, but if you took it to the other side of the spectrum, the other one, of course, there's so many beautiful studies that have come out recently about Alzheimer's and how music can help in so many ways. And I know that there are also teenagers who love, because I know a few of them who love to go into retirement centers and play music. Mm -hmm. And what would you say about that? Why is that so healing? It's so beautiful. It is so beautiful because um, you know, there, there are so many people, you know, within the retirement homes who suffer from dementia or Alzheimer's. And sometimes all it takes is a song to bring them back to life, you know, to really just turn that switch on and then have memories and feelings. And right now I have goosebumps to have yeah. those memories. I know, right? <laughs> to have those, th those memories and those feelings of, of once upon a time. 
you know? And so it's a, it really is a beautiful thing because, um, you know, Vincent used to do that as well until we got too crazy busy with Keep Music Alive, but he used to go into the nursing homes and play for them and they would just sit there and listen, but then you would see some that would just light up, light up you know, light up. and you knew that you struck a chord, no pun intended. Well, you, and I would love for you, if you have a specific story, I always love, love stories on how that helps because right now I know there's so many people that again are feeling so disconnected because of the pandemic and locked up in these retirement homes and even through a video. But if you have a story of how music kind of woke someone up, I would love if you'd share it. We've got a bunch of them, yeah, but so I, I think he has one in mind. Yeah, there's several from, <laughs> from the 88 Ways Music Book Series, uh, but there's one in particular is a, a choir director uh, who was coming back to his hometown that he hadn't been at for a number of years. And he was bringing back, you know, students, you know, that he had been involved with. And they were going to go, uh, they did a concert at the school, but then, you know, the next day they were going to go to an assisted living location. And somebody told him, you know, your music teacher that used to teach you choir is there, but, you know, don't realize she's, you know, dementia late stage and she's kind of like heads down. And so don't have and your- she won't remember you. You don't have your expectations up. So he goes- you know, and him and the kids, you know, they do their performance. And before they start, he goes up and, he, you know, kneels down and he says, oh, hello, you know, I don't know if you remember me. I'm, you know, Richard Nickerson. You taught me, you know, in school uh, choir and, you know, her head is just down, you know, nothing. Right. And then so then they go up and they start performing. They start singing and she starts to light up and starts to move around. She starts to sing with them in Latin. And she says, Oh, Ricky, oh, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Ricky. I, it's just so beautiful. So beautiful. Ricky is the name she used to call him. Oh, when, my goodness. When he was a student. <laughs> oh, it's got me goosebumps. Oh. It came right out of it. And I mean, the tear, I mean, the kids, you know, when they went back on the bus, you know, the kids were all calling their grandparents. <laughs> 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 you know, they couldn't believe it because he had shared the story with the kids about, you know, it's because of her that I'm a choir director today and they were going to perform and she was there, you know, and and then for the for the students to actually see the transformation that she went to the music first person they saw it. connected with her and uh, just so many stories like that, you know, where people just come out of it. And, you know, you, you Google online, you can see some of these you know, experiences that people have had. And, you know, even if you're not a dementia and Alzheimer's patient, you know, you, you bring, it's a time machine. Music is a time machine. You bring music from their time period, the 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever it is, and you start playing for them and you see everyone's faces light up. You see them singing along. And it's just as a musician, it's such a beautiful thing to share with them mm -hmm. and to see them that you're helping them enjoy work because you know, day to day, you know, it's I mean, they got bingo and other activities that they do. But here you're bringing them live music. Yes. you know, that they remember from their time from and their time. And it's beautiful. I think it is so powerful. Music is so incredible. And I, I just, I love that you guys have so many stories. And so I do want to talk a little bit about your book series that you have 88 ways that music really, it really impacts people and changes their life in such a profound way. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you do it like Jack Canfield does with the, you know, storytelling because, you know, like Chicken Soup for the Soul, we are so, we love stories and we remember the stories more than we'll remember the name of a book or the name <laughs> of a movie or anything else. But remember those stories because we remember how they made us feel. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's the same thing with music. Remember how that made us feel feel. So will you talk about one of the things that's so interesting is why did you start collecting all these stories and, and put them into books and now two different books? Well, it's a funny story, Jennifer, because honestly, I never thought I would ever write a book. I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't consider myself an expert on anything. I'm a so-so songwriter, a so-so engineer. I never, <laughs> never focused my life on e either one of those activities, but I was drawn to it to a training teleseminar several years back called how everyone has a book inside them. They need to write. I don't know why I picked up the phone and listen. This is before zoom, you know, the training <laughs> call on the phone. Right. And I'm listening and I'm like, and listening. And then just like a bolt of lightning it hit me like, well, what about a book of inspirational stories about how music impacted people's lives? I wouldn't have to write a book, right? <laughs> I could collect stories from all around the world, musicians and non-musicians, you know, edit the book and put it out and inspire more people to want to play music and to share music. And that's kind of how the journey began for our, everything we're doing for music education advocacy, you know, eventually led to the nonprofit, Keep mm -hmm. Music Alive, the two music holidays and, and who knows where it's going to go in time. <laughs> 
And talk about those two music holidays. I know one is in March, but um, the other one is in the fall as well. So talk about them and how did they evolve? So um, the one I'll talk about right now is Kids Music Day, which is the one that takes place in October. It's always the first Friday of October, and it usually encompasses that weekend as well to accommodate those who are unable to participate on that particular day. And um, basically, we partner with um, over a thousand different music schools, stores, and other music organizations around the world to hold events that benefit or celebrate children playing music, everything from musical instrument donation drives to musical instrument petting zoos to performances you know both privately publicly all kinds of events and okay, you, know, you have to i have to stop you what is a musical instrument petting zoo <laughs> i know it's going i know the question is ringing in someone's head so you're gonna I'm have so, to talk about it <laughs> i'm so glad you asked because it's that's my absolute favorite thing that we do with keep music alive and that is basically we go into different areas um and schools libraries festivals because we do it year round in our philadelphia yep, area everywhere um you know we've done things at legoland and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And it's just been so much fun. And we basically bring a ton of musical instruments with us. We, and we have volunteers that come with us and we lay everything out. And it's like a please touch museum for musical <laughs> instruments. And the kids get so excited that they're allowed to touch. They're allowed to touch okay. and, and play. And, you know, and we show them how to play and they just have such a grand old time. And it's a really wonderful way to introduce children to the world of making music. And, you know, hopefully it'll inspire them to to want to learn to play an instrument, which, you know, if they if they learn to play an instrument, it's something that can help them lifelong. Oh, I agree. And I think it's so important when you said that, because, again, a lot of times it's not really real to any of us, even as a, as a child. It's not really real to us until you get to touch it and you get to play with it. Yes. And, and, and I think that is it's an incredibly um it's an incredibly creative idea that you guys have come up with. It's, re it's funny because recently I was just interviewing a real estate person who was talking about playing the harp. And I thought, wow, that's so interesting because and she talked about not only the amazing, um, it's like an angel kind of this amazing sounds that come out of it. But also she talked about the touch and the feel of the strings yes. and how big it is and, and all these things. And I thought, oh, it's so fascinating because again, that's not an instrument that most people probably in their whole lifetime has ever actually touched. Right. That's right. And they yeah. now even make they now make tabletop versions of, of harps, harps. Oh. Yeah. you know, and, and many of them geared towards children and where you can actually add on once you've learned a certain amount, you can actually add on to the harp which is oh. super cool. We don't have one, but we do want one. <laughs> well, <you know. laughs> well, maybe somebody will donate one of those when they hear this, wherever they're yes. listening right now. <laughs> yes, we do keep music alive, does accept musical instrument donations. And so, we actually use them for the instrument petting zoos. And also we help place them into schools and communities in need. And you, you, I was going to say, you work with a lot of the schools, but you also work with anybody who is interested in promoting music, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, we we're basically interested in partnering with any other music education advocacy organizations uh, and groups because, you know, we're just trying to, one of our favorite quotes is a rising tide, tide lifts all boats. boats. <laughs> we're all going for the same thing. We're all trying to bring Yay! music into the world because we know how important and valuable it is to everyone. And uh, it's funny, I wanted to just allude back to your earlier question. What started the music holidays was actually Teach Music Week. And that came shortly after we had the idea for the book. Mm -hmm. We were starting to put the book together and I had a crazy idea. There should be a week every year where musicians everywhere, you know, find someone to teach a free lesson to, you know, a friend, family member, stranger, neighbor, neighbors, you know, <laughs> anyone. And then it just kind of evolved year over year. And then keep Kids Music Day happened because we met a gal who was doing Kids, kids Yoga, Yoga Day. day. I'm like, uh, yeah, it's yoga day. That's really cool. I wonder if there's a kid's music day. <laughs> and so we were, we went and looked it up online on our phones and we saw that there was no such thing. And we were thinking, surely there had to be, but there wasn't. So we immediately bought up the URL. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. And I, I actually, I'm so glad I've known you for so many years. I remember this journey and I remember yes. the kids yoga day. And I feel so blessed to have, have experienced so many of the different aspects in your successes. And, and the stories just keep growing and growing and growing. I love it. So, I know we're just about out of time. I want to go ahead and ask you my very important question, which is how are you creating yays every day? 
I would say we're bringing yays every day to the world by helping to bring more music into the world. Yeah. We're helping more kids and adults, you know, be able to have music, be able to play music. We're helping people learn how they can use music intentionally to live a, a better and happier life, be more grounded. Mm -hmm. And we're helping to bring more instruments to, to kids and adults. So music, 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 music. <laughs> M U S I C music 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 music. Yay! Yay! Well, and then finally, the last thing I love is: Would you tell people if they want to be a part of number one about your book, if they want to buy your book, either one of them, or also um, be a part of the special days that you've created? How can they follow you? Social media, websites, Amazon. How do they get in touch? So there's two books, The 88 Plus Ways Music Can Change Your Life and 88 More Ways Music Can Change Your Life. They're both available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. I think Walmart website has it. We'll be doing a book tour a little later this year, we hope. And for as far as the nonprofit and the two music holidays, keepmusicalive.org is the best way to find us, you know, connect with us if you're interested in learning more and getting or getting involved in any way. We would love to talk to you. Yeah, we're always looking for volunteers and volunteers help us all throughout the year with different things, including the music ones from Penny Zoos, if we're going to be in your area. And then also for, you know, things leading up to Teach Music Week and Kids Music Day. Yep. And I'm going to encourage you, if you have an instrument that you would like to donate to the petting zoo, the instrument petting zoo, definitely get in touch with them because they, there's never too many instruments. I'm going to say somebody out there must have a harp. I want you to have a harp yes. now. Oh, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Yay. So